Hi everybody! Today we'll talk about pulling data out of websites and combining it in our Python code. We'll extract all the HTML from a particular web page, we'll target only specific elements of interest and store them inside a data frame. This data frame can then be exported to a CSV file, which we can use as a database for our future projects. In this lesson, we'll mostly focus on two libraries. The first one would be Beautiful Soup, which will help us with the web scraping, and Regex, which will help us with fine-tuning those scraps. So if you guys are ready, you can start a new notebook file, and I'm going to use Google Colab for mine, but you can use um, Jupyter Notebook as well, it's not very different. We'll start with the imports and type the following. Import URL lib dot request, which will help us access the website. Now from BS4, import beautiful soup as BS, where beautiful soup is in camel case, otherwise it's not gonna work. In the next line, we'll import re, aka rejects or regular expressions, so we can do some natural language processing with our strings. And lastly, we'll import pandas as pd. In the next cell, we'll extract function names and usage from the Python documentation, and more specifically, the random functions. So let's start with loading our web page into a variable. So page equals URL lib dot request dot URL open. And inside the round brackets, we'll specify the URL, which you can copy from the description of the video. Next, we'll pull the HTML data from the page with beautiful soup. So we'll type soup equals BS, and inside the round brackets, our variable page. Now let's have a peek and print this soup. And yep, it sure looks like HTML code, but is it really usable at this point? Mm, not just yet. We can actually target specific elements or tags in this HTML soup and focus only on the information we require. So let's start with the names of the functions, and to do that, we'll need to access the developer tools or console in your browser. Using the tiny arrow button, we can select the elements we want and view their code. If we click on the function names, we see they are stored inside a description term tag, or DT. And since we want to target all the names, we'll also target all the DT elements. So let's go back to our code and start typing. Names equal soup dot body dot find all with a capital A. And inside the round brackets, we specify the name of the element, in our case, DT. Let's print it and have a look. We can definitely see that there's still some work to do, and this is where regex kicks in. I'm going to create a new variable, function underscore names, which equals to re dot find all, this time with a lowercase a, and inside the round brackets would be the information we're looking to find, which in our case would be every string that starts with id equals random dot and continues with some sort of a word, um, which we can define with backslash w plus in regex. In other words, our variable names will only include the strings that start with id and end where the function name ends. I really hope it makes sense. Our second parameter would be our names variable, which is exactly where we want regex to look for that information. And we'll need to wrap it up in a string format so it's interpreted as text. And now let's print the result. You can see we're almost there. We just need to remove the first few characters from each string. So we'll type function underscore names, which equals to square brackets item, and then we'll slice its first four characters for item in function underscore names. We can run the cell now, and it's perfect. We need to do the same with the description of each function. So description equals soup dot body dot find all 
with a capital A, but this time we won't be targeting the description term tag, we'll be targeting the description details tag, aka DD. So let's fill it in our code and print it so we know what we're dealing with. Okay, this is way more complicated. Look at all these EM tags and paragraphs. It will take us years to get rid of all the unnecessary elements with the methods we just learned. Luckily, Beautiful Soup is not just beautiful, it is also smart. It provides us with an easy way of removing those annoying tags. For that, we'll create an empty list first, we'll call it function underscore usage, and right below, using a for loop, we'll parse through the items in our description variable. For item in description, inside the loop we'll modify each item so it equals to item.text instead, which is the easy way I was talking about earlier. And now we can store it in our function usage list with function underscore usage append item. And let's print the results. Okay, that's nice. What it looks like, it didn't remove the next line operators, so we'll have to do it on our own. We'll add one more line to our loop. Item equals item dot replace backslash n with a space. Let's run it again. And we got it. But before we move on with the data frame, we need to check if our lists are in the same length. So let's quickly do that using the len function. Yeah, looks like we got it right. It's 24 items here and 24 items there. In the next cell, we can store these lists in a data frame. So data equals pd dot data frame in camel case. And inside the round brackets, we'll specify a dictionary to hold the column names and content. So function name represents function underscore names. And function usage, as you can guess, represents function underscore usage. Let's print it and have a look. Beautiful! Our data frame is complete. Okay, but what if we want to target elements with very specific attributes? How are we going to do that? Let's say we want to target only the functions that have to do with bookkeeping. And very similarly to what we've done before, we'll start with a new variable. Let's call it example equals soup dot body dot find all with a capital A. And inside the round brackets, our first parameter is the element, which in our case would be div. And here we can add one more parameter, ATTRS, which stands for attributes, but I can't really pronounce it, therefore the spelling. Then we specify a dictionary of an attribute value pair. In our case, ID stands for the attribute and bookkeeping dash functions is the value. So what we're targeting here is all the div elements where the ID attribute equals to bookkeeping dash functions. As you can see, we can get very specific with beautiful soup. That's why it's so beautiful. And there's one more step if we want to officially call it a database. We'll need to export this data frame into a CSV file. If you're on Jupyter, you can simply type data to underscore CSV. And inside the round brackets, you type the name of the file. Um, let's say my underscore file dot CSV. As simple as that. In Colab, it's a bit more complicated, but it's doable. We'll need to connect our Google Drive first and store the file there. So, from google.colab, import drive, and then drive.mount, and inside the round brackets, a string of slash content slash drive. We'll follow the link, select an account, allow, copy the URL, and paste it in the box and enter. So our next line would be data dot to underscore CSV and inside the round brackets slash content slash drive slash my drive 
And in my case, I'm saving it in lessons slash beautiful soup and slash the file name is data.csv. So let's run the cell and check if our file appears in the drive now. It is there and it looks amazing. Good job, everybody. Now you can create your own databases using this super simple and fast web scraping technique. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Any subscription and thumbs up would be highly appreciated. And I'll see you around. Bye bye.